Welcome back to Epistemology with Robert. Uh, this is the second video. Um, if you want to see the first video, just click here. Just kidding, I'm not going to put a link there. Uh, but uh, you can find the first video uh, here on my YouTube channel or on my blog. Uh, the first video was just simply a quick introduction on why we're even talking about epistemology, why does it matter, uh, that sort of thing. So for just to give a very quick outline of how the rest of these videos are going to go, um, the, this video is essentially going to be talking about a kind of a baseline epistemology that I think um, we could all agree on. And then uh, the next video is really the meat of it, which is going to be about my, my specific epistemology, how I kind of developed it, uh, how I uh, came to um, look at things that way. And then I think it'd be fun to uh, finish things off with a final video or two that are case studies using my epistemology, how I look at things. Um, for instance, because, because that's the ultimate goal. In fact, you could look at it as going backwards in that we kind of started started this video series with talking about like why some people doubt the moon landing or, uh, I mean, just take why do some people believe in God or not. And uh, then you can rewind that to go back all the way to um, a baseline epistemology, for instance. So uh, let's get on with that. Um, as far as a baseline epistemology, I'm not going to spend a lot of time getting to the nitty gritty or trying to defend these things because, once again, this is what I think almost all of us will agree on anyway. I just want to lay it out because it is still important. And also, I will give a second quick disclaimer. I am not a professional philosopher. Um, I am trying to just be brief with these ideas, and I'm going to be skipping over stuff and blurring the lines a little bit, so bear with me. Uh, but with that said, let's get on with it. Um, so starting from the very bare minimum, I think it's helpful to think of epistemology of like you come into existence and like how you start processing things. Because I mean, ultimately that is what we do as infants. Um, I didn't say babies because infants sounds more like academic when you're an infant. Um, anyway, uh, so one of the most famous, probably the, maybe the most famous phrase in all of philosophy is I think therefore I am or the Latin equivalent which I would probably butcher if I tried right now because I can't remember it exactly. Uh, so that comes from Descartes uh, who was trying to find the absolute bare minimum or most rock solid thing that we could know and in fact he uh, posited that it's the only thing we can know for sure is that we are currently thinking right now. And the basic idea is that we know that to some degree or other our faculties uh, um, can be deceived uh, and ultimately anything could be a deception. We could be in the matrix, uh, we, we could be dreaming, who knows. Uh, but as soon as you try to undermine the idea that I exist, for instance, you have already proven that you do exist because you are the one thinking it. So that that is like the most bare minimum minimum of the most radical um, skepticism you could have. Uh, so for obvious reasons, uh, I think therefore I am. So that, that that is like the very most basic, but obviously that doesn't get us very far. So next up from that, um, you know, we're, okay, so we exist, we just woke up into reality, I think therefore I am, now how do we take in this data? And what I'm going to posit is that the most reasonable viewpoint is some form of uh, realism, which is to say that what we see around us is real. It doesn't mean it, we're taking it in perfectly, but it is in fact real. Uh, and the, the opposite of that would be solipsism, or idealism, which means that uh, to some degree or another, everything's an illusion, that we're either in the matrix or it's a dream or whatever. Um, now, this is an interesting thought experiment because it can be hard to come up with reasoning to why we think things are real. Um, but for now, I'm just going to say that, um, well, really, 
how I would put it is I think Occam's razor is probably the best argument for realism. Uh, but that is a, I'll leave that as a sneak peek for Occam's Razor. I will probably actually spend a whole video on Occam's Razor because it is so crucial to everything. Um, and I don't want to go too much farther because it will take a second to unpack the rest. So let me leave it there. So we have, uh, gave you a quick outline of how the rest of the videos are going to go. Uh, it gave you a baseline epistemology of I think, therefore I am, and then uh, we get to this uh, realism of the world around us is, is in fact real and not an illusion, and to uh, very, very quickly unpack Occam's Razor, it just simply says the simplest explanation is usually the best. So uh, the simplest explanation is that what is around us is real. Um, it would be a more complex world if it was an illusion, because then something is like generating that illusion. So um, we will unpack that a little bit more. But for now, we have I think, therefore I am, and everything is probably real, or it's it makes the most sense to simply assume that, uh, since we can't prove otherwise.